This is Lian So from The Science Scribe and in this video we're going to look at buffer solutions. Suppose if I was running a titration between sodium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. My weak acid of ammonium chloride is going in the flask while I'm going to place my strong base in the burette. If I was doing this titration I would be aiming for the following reaction between the acidic ammonium ions and ammonium chloride and the hydroxide ions found in the strong base sodium hydroxide. If I was to add the sodium hydroxide and track the pH, I would notice the following changes on my titration curve. I noticed that near the start of the titration curve, there is a region where we added a lot of sodium hydroxide but the pH did not climb very high. This area is called the buffer region. It is called a buffer region because it contains something called a buffer solution. A buffer solution is any solution that can resist changes in pH and in this case, it is a mixture of weak acid and conjugate base. I know it is a mixture of weak acid and conjugate base because I started with a weak acid of ammonium ions, that's NH4+. As I added some sodium hydroxide, some of that NH4+, my ammonium ions, got converted into NH3, which is the conjugate base. Which means that in the flask, there will be a mixture of my weak acid ammonium, NH4+, and ammonia, NH3. Right in the middle of the buffer region is an area called the buffer point. At the buffer point, exactly half the amount of my original contents in the flask has reacted. So let's say at the start I have some amount of ammonium ions and I'm adding just enough hydroxide to react with half of that. In doing so, I'm going to produce ammonia. You can see that at the buffer point, I've got the same amount of ammonium ions and ammonia. Then you could also say that they would have the same concentration. Now way back in a different video on buffer solution pH, we derived this formula which will always tell us the concentration of hydronium ions in a buffer solution. My weak acid is ammonium and my conjugate base is ammonia. Since they are the same concentration, it's like saying you're taking the same value and dividing it by itself. This just comes out to be 1. So my weak acid divided by conjugate base comes out to be 1, so I could say H3O plus equals Ka. If I was to take the negative log of both sides, I notice that on the left hand side I'm just getting my pH formula back. pH equals negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions, so my left is just pH. But hang on, on the right hand side there's another formula which states that pKa equals negative log of Ka. So on the right hand side that's the equivalent of saying pKa. This means that at the buffer point, my pH is just pKa. Now suppose if I had a buffer solution which had ammonium ions and ammonia. And let's say that the pH of this particular buffer solution was less than the pKa value of ammonium. This means that this particular buffer solution would only be effective towards adding more base. Because you can see that I can add a lot of sodium hydroxide and the pH only climbs by a very small value. On the other hand, if I had a buffer solution with a pH value that was higher than pKa, that means that it is effective towards adding more acid. Because you can see that as I try to decrease the pH, the pH only decreases a small amount while I add a lot of acid. Suppose if I was doing a titration between hydrochloric acid and methylamine. In my flask I'm going to have a weak base of methylamine where in the burette I'm going to have a strong acid of hydrochloric acid. As I do this titration I'd be aiming for the following reaction between the methylamine and the hydronium ions found in hydrochloric acid. When I add the hydrochloric acid, I notice the following changes in pH. I also notice that before equivalence point, there is a part where I can keep adding hydrochloric acid and the pH doesn't change very much. This region is called, again, the buffer region. It's a buffer region because it also contains a buffer solution. This time though, it's a mixture of weak base and conjugate acid. In the middle of the buffer region, I still have a buffer point where half of my original weak base has reacted to give an equal amount of conjugate acid. Because I have the same amount of weak base and conjugate acid, this means that their concentrations would be the same as well. If I was to use the same formula for trying to find the concentration of hydronium ions in any buffer solution, and my values for conjugate acid and weak base are equal, this means that when they divide by each other, it cancels out and gives one. And just like before, if I take the negative log of both sides, I end up with pH on the left hand side and pKa on the right hand side. This means that, even though I have a weak base versus strong acid titration, the pH at the buffer point is still equal to the pKa value. 
I know this sounds repetitive, but I'm including this here just to avoid any confusion where you might think pH equals pKb. Now suppose if I had a buffer solution which contains my weak base of methyl amine and the conjugate acid of methyl ammonium ions. And suppose if I measured the pH of the solution and found that the pH was greater than the pKa value of my methyl amine. I could say that this solution is only resistant or effective towards adding more acid because when I add more acid there is plenty of the original weak base to react with. Therefore I could add a lot of hydrochloric acid and only get a small decrease in pH. The reverse is true. Suppose if I had a buffer solution of methyl amine and methyl ammonium ions where my concentration of methyl ammonium ions was very high. This would mean that this particular buffer solution would be effective towards adding base because there's a lot of the conjugate acid to cancel out with any further addition of base. This means that as I add more base, the pH only increases very slightly. Just a recap. A buffer solution is something that can resist changes in pH. If the pH of the buffer is greater than pKa, it's effective against further addition of acid. On the other hand, if the pH of the buffer is less than pKa, that means it's only effective towards addition of more base. In a titration curve, the pH of a buffer point is always pKa. Even if I have a weak base starting off in the flask, it's still pKa. A buffer is just a mixture of weak acid and conjugate base, or a mixture of weak base and its conjugate acid. In this common question, they're mixing a weak acid of ammonium chloride with a conjugate base of ammonia solution. They've given you some details about the ammonia solution, such as 200 ml and 0.175 moles per litre, and they've also told you that they want you to work out what mass of ammonium chloride you would need so that your final buffer solution would be at a pH of 8.92. Now for every single buffer calculation that we've ever done, we've always fallen back to this formula. It's no surprise then that we're going to use this formula again. Now I know that the concentration of ammonia, which is my alkaline species, is 0.175 moles per litre. I always put my alkaline species at the bottom. Now this formula only accepts values of Ka, but the question itself has given me a value for pKa. So I need to convert pKa into Ka. I can use the formula pKa equals negative log of Ka. So I'm going to move 9.24 into pKa. Then I'm going to rearrange that and make Ka the subject and work out my value for Ka. Now that I know my value of Ka, I can bring that back into my formula. They've also given me a value of pH, which is 8.92. Remember that pH is just a number which can give you clues about the value of the concentration of hydronium ions. To work out the actual concentration of hydronium ions, I can use the pH formula. My pH is 8.92, so I'm going to move that in. I'm going to rearrange that and work out my concentration of hydronium ions. And then I can bring that back into my formula as well. At this point, I can go ahead and start working out the concentration of the weak acid which I would need to make this buffer solution. Now since ammonium chloride is my weak acid and ammonia is my weak base, this means I need 0.366 mol per litre of ammonium chloride in my buffer solution. So let's recap what's going on here. We've got a beaker, it's got 200 mL of liquid, and the concentration of ammonia in this solution is 0.175 mol per litre. The concentration of ammonium chloride which we need in this solution would be 0.366 mol per litre. Now the question itself says they want to work out what mass of ammonium chloride I need. Well the thing about concentration is that concentration can give you clues about what amount you need first. In this case I know that I have 200 ml. So I have a volume, I have a concentration, which means I can use this formula, N equals C times V. My concentration is 0.366, I'm going to move that in. I know my volume is 200 ml and I need to convert that into litres to use this formula. Go ahead and do that and it tells me that I need 0.0732 moles of ammonium chloride. Note that the question wants you to calculate what mass of ammonium chloride you need. Moles and mass are different, but I can convert moles into mass using this particular formula. The amount of something equals the mass divided by the molar mass. Since I'm working out the mass, which is the little m on top, I'm going to rearrange that. The molar mass is given to me in the question, so I'm going to substitute that in. 
and the amounts of moles I've calculated in the previous step. When I work this out, this tells me that I would need 3.92 grams of ammonium chloride. No, Papi, that's not how you do the calculation for buffer solution. 